an omelette, maybe? I've got two eggs or one? Two, two eggs, eggs. Okay. yeah. I'm very excited to make it for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I should have gotten a bigger plate. <laughs> yeah. This is a huge omelette. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to eat this. Mmm. Oh, the veggie bacon is a really nice touch, babe. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. Mmm. Agency just sent me this beautiful basket of flowers and goodies. Since brands can't do events anymore, they're doing a lot more of these digital types of get-togethers. And this is actually my first digital event, but this is so freaking thoughtful. Whoa, look at that. I have some masks, dry candy. Suggest this with it, or should I go get a vodka? What do you think I should? the best feeling putting on my skincare after a long day this is just like a sacred ritual for me because I am truly pampering myself but anyway I wanted to talk about my current skin I am extremely grateful that I haven't dealt with much acne or texture in my life however my skin is definitely changing I am getting older aging is 100% inevitable and I accept it however I am always down for some preventative measures just to kind of elongate the youth of my skin. So I've really been trying to get more of a custom skincare routine. So huge thank you to Agency for sponsoring today's video. So Agency is personalized skincare that's customized for you by a dermatology provider who's gonna help you reach your skin goals. The process is really cool actually. I took a quiz, took photos of my face, and then a dermatology provider messaged me with my custom formula. So this is mine. So I have the Future formula, which has four active ingredients in it. It also has aloe and vitamin E to help with wrinkles, firmness, texture, and discoloration. So I apply this right before my moisturizer. I just get one pump and it's very serum-y and my skin just drinks it up. As you guys know, I have normal to dry skin and my future formula is gonna be different to yours because it's custom tailored to what your skin goals are. So I've been using this since February and I love it so far. I've gotten no irritation. My skin's taking it really well. The thing with skincare is you've got to be really consistent with it. And I'm very, very excited to continue to use this. Agency also has a dark spot formula that treats dark spots and hyperpigmentation. So if you're prescribed to both formulas, they're designed to work together. But anywho, right now, Agency is offering a free trial for a month, which is incredible. All you have to do is pay $4.95 for shipping, which is amazing. I will leave all that information in the description box, so please go check it out. I think I'm about to go to bed. Ben's downstairs watching a movie, but I'm just flipping through my phone and I opened up my notes section and I'm just reading through all the past dreams I've had in the past month. I got into the habit of jotting down my dreams the second I wake up and then writing like a sentence or two that analyzes what happens. I feel like it's unearthing a lot of old dusty memories. I'm starting to notice like some patterns like a common setting that keeps happening in my dreams is my old childhood church so i don't know if i mentioned this but my parents are pretty religious they are a presbyterian christian and i grew up going to church every sunday from the day i was freaking born all the way up into high school and then once i got into like community college i think like i think i purposely picked Oh my god, I hope my parents are watching this. I used to work at Forever 21 when I was in community college and I would always like volunteer to get the Sunday shift because I'd be like, ah, I can't go to church because I gotta work. I think right now I'm just trying to dig more into my unconscious, hoping that it will help me in the present, in the conscious realm. Dreaming has always really intrigued me because we spend half of our life doing it. Like, what's going on? What's going on in my brain? I have all these data points and now I'm not 
quite sure what to do with them. Ben did tell me one cool tip about dreaming. He told me that it's more about the feeling that you have in your dream rather than the content. So if you're feeling scared or at peace or excited or lustful, it all tells you how you're feeling in the conscious. But yeah, I'm just fascinated about dreams and sleeping and so I thought that I would document this too. Am I tracking too much in my life? Maybe. A bit more flexible with the way the people around me receive love because just because I receive love through words of affirmation that's you know doesn't go for for everyone and so we finished so we just wrapped up the largest group my book club has ever had. We had 76 participants. So the book that we went over was The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And I think because this book is so easy to talk about, there's no right or wrong answer. And everyone likes to talk about love, you know? Or maybe I'm just projecting. I like to talk about love and I love to talk about how we love to be loved. Normally for signups, we keep it at around like 20 to 30 participants and it depends on like how fast people sign up and also how they fill out the questionnaire. Obviously we like answers that are more, a little bit more detailed and fleshed out, but with the love languages, we pretty much accepted everyone within the time slot. We had like a little itinerary, we had like a large group discussion, and then we also had 15 minutes of a breakout room where there were just smaller clusters. And then I just like kind of floated from room to room. I just didn't know that we could do this in Zoom. It's so, Futuristic. I genuinely feel like I got to connect with a lot more of y'all and this is truly one of my favorite ways to interact with you guys. I sometimes I feel like a meetup or like a meet and greet can feel kind of gratuitous because I'm just like, I'm here. Like I don't have any talents. Like I can't sing for you. I can't dance for you. I got nothing, you know? <laughs> But then when we're all just coming together to talk about a subject, about a book, and having it be like a two-way street, three-way, four-way, uh, it, it feels much more fulfilling that way. And uh, I don't know, it just makes my heart warm. But yeah, if you are curious on how you can join our next Zoom session, I'll leave the book club right here, Curl Up Club, come join. I believe March's pick is going to be The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I really enjoyed that book. That one also makes you think about how you want to live your life. Oh, you like the bread? Oh, ho, ho. It's the end of the month, which means it's time for bullet journaling. It feels nice to actually be on schedule. So I thought I would just go over my April spread and show you guys the process. I find this entire experience extremely soothing and calming. I definitely have elevated my bullet journal game because I got a bunch of these amazing stickers from Fallen Design. I first heard about this company from Lucy Moon here on YouTube. She does incredible videos about journaling, self-development, she does a lot of reviews. And now I have all these gorgeous stickers that look like they are dried flowers and I just got one for each month. So I think for April, we should go for this, this like nice daisy situation. I think it'll look really nice because look how nice March looked. So I thought for April, we can do these cute little daisies. These stickers are just a really nice touch if you just wanted to add a little something something to your bullet journal. So as always, I like to start off with pencil first, just so I have a rough idea of what it will look like. So now I'm just gonna go down the list and do my line calendar, one through 30, and then, and then use the first letter of that day. So. April 1st is Thursday, so there's a T. This year for my bullet journal, I'm just keeping it a very uniform layout. That way I don't have to spend any brain energy trying to get creative, uh, but I really like the way it came out. So this month's habit tracker is the same. We've got exercise, flossing, washing chippo. This is if I've read or written anything that day. My stretching habit, whether I eat healthy, 
if I drink enough water. I like to drink three of these in a day. And then this is my new thing that I'm tracking. It's called Homework for Life. It's a whole new concept, which I will fill you guys in later, but it's something I wanna do every single day. And then the last is an extra meditation. So this is what the rest of the week looks like. I just threw on the little daisy stickers. I really don't waste any time strategically planning out where I want the daisy. I just stick it wherever feels right. And then I call it a day. And there we go. And now we're all ready to go for April. Yay! This is the best feeling ever. I love being prepared. So I'm about to test out my first TikTok recipe. I got recommended this account called Cafe Maddie. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in all your recommendations for TikTokers I should follow. But basically, Maddie has this tandan noodle recipe, which I was shocked because I actually had all the ingredients. I bought this because I saw Mel of ABG rave about mom's dry noodles. She had a different version, but I got the dandan dan version because I love dandan dan noodles. It's like, like a spicy Szechuan peanut noodle. Is that enough description for you? I have exactly one packet left. And so I thought that I would do this tandan noodle Maddie style. So let's get started. Now, doesn't this look absolutely delicious? I never thought to add cucumbers to my dandan dan noodles. Makes a lot of sense though. The only thing that I did differently from Maddie's recipe is that I just kept my noodles warm. I mean, there's a time and place for cold noodles for me. And if I'm gonna eat cold noodles, I have to be hot. And right now, I'm like, I'm just right. I could be a degree or two warmer, so. Why am I justifying that I want warm noodles? Okay, I just wanted warm noodles, y'all. Straight up. Mm. Oh yes. These noodles are so freaking good. They're like nutty, salty. They've got like the Szechuan powder that kind of numbs your mouth. The cucumbers add such a great crunch to the noodles. They're also soaked in the sauce, which is very, very nice. Mm. So as promised, I wanted to explain to you guys what homework for life is. I know, an extremely unsexy name. We've been avoiding homework the majority of our lives and now I'm voluntarily doing it. I know, very bizarre. But anyway, it comes from this book I just finished. It's called Story Worthy by Matthew Dix and it completely changed my mindset about the importance of storytelling and it's a skill that I just want to continue to refine. Uh, this was a book recommendation by Ali Abdal here on YouTube. I first picked up this book because I just wanted my stories to be a little bit more entertaining. I've always struggled with telling my stories because I tend to rush through them. I don't know where to put the punchline. And honestly, I just found my stories boring. So I was like, okay, let's figure this out. Let's read a book and learn how I can make a more captivating story. And after I finished this book, I was like, oh shit. Storytelling is everywhere. It's beyond just being interesting. It's about how you can speak universal truths and how you can be authentic. Storytelling really is inescapable. You tell a story when you're talking about your day, if something happened to you, whether you're at work and you have to pitch something. Because at the end of the day, people don't remember facts. They, re they remember stories. And if you can tell a compelling story, ooh, you've got a lot of power there. <laughs> A big lie that so many people think is that, oh, I don't have any stories to share. My life's not interesting. There's nothing crazy that happened to me. But honestly, the greatest stories don't come from those big like near life or near death experiences in your life. It's those small, relatable, authentic, comprehensible moments that really stick with us. And so you have to pay attention for those moments because they just kind of sneak up on you. They're really easy to forget if you don't pay attention to them. So homework for life is finding that story worthy moment in your day. It can be something very small. It just has to be 
human, like a five second human moment. And uh, you just put it on a spreadsheet and you write it down. When you start seeing everything on a spreadsheet, then you can start recognizing some patterns and patterns equate to stories. I really wanna get into the habit of finding smaller story worthy moments to make my life feel more expansive because when I do write about a memory or I stop and reflect on something that happened that was important to me, it does slow the pace of my life down even more. And at this moment in my life, I just want it to feel long. I want to relish my time. I want to relish my time. And the only way to really extend my day is to stop and really, really notice these moments. So yeah, that's why I am committed to doing homework for life every single day, which is why I want to make it a habit. Uh, I've already forgotten a couple of days, which kind of sucks. It's because homework for life is something that I need to incorporate like at the end of the day because it's hard to remember something from yesterday and in the morning I already have just like this morning routine that's stacked and ready to go so I just need to get in the swing of carving out some time to write this down but yeah story worthy was one of the best books I've read all year and hopefully that means I come up with better stories for my channel I don't know it can only help you guys honestly